What's up, guys? Hope you're doing great. This is your boy, Kobe Shots. So welcome to another episode of Creative Chat. Here, we go into the lives of our creatives, photographers, filmmakers alike, anyone in the production and creative space. And we talk about the experiences that they've accumulated over the years, particularly what they do right now, how far they've come, and how they can assist people like you watching right now to get there. So. Next to me is Kweku Nicholas. I would allow him to introduce himself. I don't want to take it away from him. So, yeah. <laughs> I've already done the introduction. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what do you do? Your uh, name, of course, first of oh, all. My name yes. is Kweku Nicholas. Okay. I'm Nicholas, actually. Yeah, but everybody know me by Kweku Nicholas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Kweku Nicholas, if you would tell us a little bit about yourself, what exactly do you do in the creative space? Um, I'm a photographer. Okay. Like, um, I do weddings, lifestyle, and portrait photography. Oh, okay. Wonderful. So, um, going deeper into the conversation about your life and all that, can you give us a brief story, background story, about how you got into photography itself? Okay. Um, it all started way back in university, okay. uh, in my final year. So, I was with a friend. His name is Felix. I, I remember that. His <laughs> name is Felix. So, we are about to graduate, okay? So yeah. in our final year, first first semester, I guess. So when we are we are about to go on vacation, then we decided, Charlie, my brother, what are we going to do mm -hmm. after school, school. Over, Charlie? <laughs> and, and my father also has been worrying me to pick up his job, like he was a photographer as well. Oh, yeah. So okay, so it's actually in yeah, the before family. I, before I realized, <laughs> like there was this six D in the family. Wow. Everybody was using it, my wow. brother, my sister. My <laughs> <laughs> it was like a and family heirloom. I knew nothing about photography. Okay. I knew about okay. Photography. Yeah, so, um, okay, well, I, I did photography, but, you know, it was then time, the analog type. It wasn't the digital one. Oh, so, so you actually had a taste yes, of yes. Um, I knew, using I, I, I knew a little camera. bit of the um, framing. Go yeah, and even yeah. with that, it's very challenging because you don't get to see the pictures as yes. you shoot them. When we went on vacation, um, I tried to do a little bit of um, background study on photography, okay. yeah, and then I started, I started doing some tutorials, learning tutorials from YouTube. Okay. So actually, uh, the photography thing started uh, when um, my schoolmates, like um, a group, uh, how do you call it? Is uh, it a club uh, or something? No, uh, my mates, year group, okay, okay. Like, yeah. year group, we decided to have um, a party or get together. Yeah, during the December vacation. So okay. we all went, then I took my camera there. And oh, I, started sure. with, I started with um, one CD for like just one soft copy or something like that. Okay. Yeah, then before I realized I was making some coins. So that, out of it. Out yeah, of it. so the next semester we came back to school, I decided to take it serious. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so basically it started from there. Then all right. we have gone to this. Time. Okay, so it was like um, um, I can presume that you completed school in 2017, yeah, if I'm right. Yeah. All right, so you've been doing photography for close to five years. Yeah, December will be five years. December will be five, five years. years. That's wonderful. That's actually a journey because yeah. having a taste of the analog camera itself, Charlie, getting into the digital. <laughs> how was the difference? How would you describe the difference? Because using analog, you don't get to see a lot of things as you shoot. Yes, you course. only get to see them after they've been produced. So what's the difference? How does the transition? I mean, how, how is the effect? Okay. How is so it? So with the, with the analog, you just have to try your best to get good shots. Yeah. Because you don't know um, any, you don't see a picture, you don't see ISO, yeah. you don't see anything. You don't get to see oh, yes, you, just, you just frame, you yeah. shoot, you go yeah. your way. Then you go to um, the printing studio then. With the negatives print. to yes. yeah, develop them so, into the pictures. I didn't yeah. have anything to do with that. Okay. It was just my dad. So. I think the pictures my dad will go and do all the work. I don't oh. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, but okay. this one you have to go and do post production Actually, and yeah, get and one. all that. Yes. All so. that. It will drive me to a particular question when it comes to when we are discussing about post production because okay. I know that a lot of people can give photographers hell. Yeah. When it comes to post production, <laughs> change this for me. Can you do this for me or that or that? Yeah. And it's also definitely going to affect the price, and which we are also <laughs> going to talk about. My son here is crying. Over the price and aspect of it. Yeah. It's not easy. No, 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 no. They change, change this for me. Change my face. Oh, can yeah. You, the request from clients. Can you clients. Me a flat tummy? Can you do Look at all that. Yet they are not <laughs> ready to pay no, for no, the extra. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you've told us a little bit about the background of your photography, how, how far you've come, yeah. and the chance that you had studying photography and even getting a chance to hold a camera first yeah. off. Okay. Um, if I would ask you this question, do you think 
photography is actually a lucrative business. Do you think photography is a sustainable job? Yeah, I'll just go straight to the point. Yes. You believe so? Very much. Because um, I come across people having difficulties, a lot of challenges, trying to get their foot out the door. First of all, getting into the space to even get recognized, let alone get money out of it to make a living out of that. Can you discuss with us how you started getting your gigs? Because it's very important. A lot of people would love to know how you started landing clients because everyone has a technique. If there was a system you followed or any particular way that you oh, can... Oh, what I would say I mean, is like tell you anyone. have to be consistent yeah. in whatever you are doing. Okay. If you mean the photography, the style that you choose to go with, yeah. Yeah, just be consistent. And I think those who appreciate whatever you are doing will still follow you and will still need your services. Yeah. That's right. yeah. But you believe that photography is a sustainable business? Of course, of it course. Is. If, you, if you're on the right path and you are doing the very good work, um, consistent work. Okay. So, so yeah. from um, what I'm deducing from what you just said is that you need consistent practice. Yes. Yes. And coming to practice, have you gotten confronted by any photographer, startup photographer who wants to learn a thing or two from you and wants it there and there, wants to learn everything within a matter of few months or few days? Have you been confronted by anyone like that? Yeah, a couple of them, like <laughs> two or three. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. how what what was your response to them? Because of course, it doesn't come like that it doesn't come right off the back overnight them, i myself i'm still learning <laughs> yes and i learn yes. every day mm -hmm. so even the boys i'm with right now they always seem ah, like cool. Your editing is changing i'm like bro it needs to improve of course need improve. you need to improve yeah so keep up the good work and yeah you'll be there yeah. but do you take any interns or if anyone wants to learn from you do you have any um, i mean not much. provision I just, for that i just i just um if i see maybe you can help me as well yeah, of course. Why not? Okay, help in, in what sense? Yeah, okay. I don't want to um, take in somebody who knows nothing at all. Okay. Yeah, maybe like um, you you know your way around photography a little bit, like okay. you know how to handle camera, small, like a little bit of Lightroom, a little bit of Photoshop, so that maybe I can add whatever I know yeah, to your knowledge. To it. Yeah. yeah, so that yeah. you can also help me. Because there's no time to no time start to someone from the ground like that. Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. If I'm going to do that, Charlie, you have to pay so much for that. So much and yeah. so much. What do you mean so exactly? <laughs> can, you, can you pronounce the figure or something? Oh, somewhere around the six k. Yeah. Okay, that was just by the way. Yeah. Actually, so talking about um, you're done with how um, you describe photography as a sustainable mm -hmm. business and what you need to do to get your foot at the door and how to stay consistent and relevant. Yeah. All right. So coming down to acquisition of clientele. How do you go about it and how do you get to keep clients? Because in the first place, you need to have good work, as we've just yes. discussed. Um, what's the way forward to be able to grab the attention of a client? What do you do to keep them? Okay, to keep uh, clients. This one. Let me post on this one. This one, I think, um, like the consistency I've already said, yeah. you need to come clean with your clients uh, in terms of the delivery aspect. That one, I'm also at fault sometimes, you know. <laughs> you promise the client, Charlie, I'm going to deliver your work at this given time. But you see... Circumstances of, happen. <laughs> yes, you know. Then um, there, there, there's delays. So yeah. maybe you're supposed to come clean to the client. But yeah. because of your fear that there's something going to happen when you tell the person. You, yeah. just, you just delay the person instead of telling the person straightforward. You just delay the person. It yeah. kind of... Yeah. Was everything. So yeah. I think being honest with your clients That's and stuff, yeah, it's yeah. a way of keeping your clients. They need honesty. Yeah. yeah so we, we just have to be honest yeah. with our clients. You have to be and blank so. and transparent yes. with them. Yes. 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 Because um, you wouldn't want to disappoint them. Because I, I, I understand that the feeling of disappointment there starts from when you can't tell them that this is the situation. But yes. in truth, you would have loved to tell them. But it's better that you come clean. Just, just come clean yeah, come clean and tell them. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's a, I mean, it's, it's a difficult decision time. to make, but you just it have to do that. Time yes, that. because for the sake of keeping up. them, it's very, very important yes. to do that. And also, um, I've seen a couple of videos behind the scenes and all that, <laughs> seeing you at the work. Yeah. Um, I, I can tell it's a big challenge, especially when you are trying to pose yeah. your subjects yeah. when it comes to weddings and you know portraiture. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, yeah. there's a few techniques. Did you learn this um, in online or in a school or oh, something like that? Not really. I was How did you come like, about before, that? Before photography, I was also doing a little bit of modeling. Oh, yourself? Yes, yes. I did. Um, um, photo modeling, I did uh, runway as well. Runway as well. Interesting. So I, I, I already knew how to. Yes. Use, yeah. Even so, in front of camera, so it yes. makes it even easy when you're behind the camera yeah, directing those in front of camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I that, see. Just come natural. 
Okay. Okay. All right. So across the genres and photography that you do, you do um, weddings. You also do um, portraiture. Sometimes beauty. Yep. Looking across all of these ones, which of them do you normally get booked for? Weddings. Weddings. Yeah. Okay. So with the weddings, um, how does it go? How do you talk to your clients? Is there something you would like to disclose? Because someone may not want to, but I mean, for the sake of the discussion, maybe someone is trying to yeah. have a stance in well, where depends, how to start it, it to charge. On the client. Yeah. Some clients want to have um, communication with you, like they want to have this rapport with you before they did their their. Uh, the day of the, the wedding, the wedding itself, yeah. yeah. And some of them, you don't even hear from them. They will just tell you to talk to the planner directly. So you just see them. Most of my, like, let me say, seventy percent of my clients, they don't know me. They just see me on the day of the, on the wedding. On the day of the wedding, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so interesting. I see. Um, talking about the um, cost involved um, in photography gear, I know it's very expensive. Yeah. But looking at that comparatively to how much we charge, do you believe that photographers get what they are worth? Um, <laughs> clients don't pay as much. Oh, well, not all, not all clients. Some do appreciate us. Yeah, some do. Yeah, some do appreciate us. But some of most, most of them don't really see the worth of what we do. So they just, so they just, they just <laughs> say, oh, photo keke. Look at that. Yeah. So <laughs> they don't, they don't see the need to pay, to that, pay much that much for photography. Thinking their hair, their attire, their makeup is. It's way more important than the photography. Yeah. Yeah, so they rather want to spend on that rather than the photography. Yeah. And they think, photo, a photo keke. It's just yeah, photography. Yeah. You just point the camera at whatever you're yeah. shooting at and click. <laughs> but, so if you give a judgment to this, do you think it's a fault of the clients not understanding the worth of photography or it's from we, the photographers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to be difficult. I don't know who to blame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if, if I'll put this across, I would say... First of all, it's our fault as photographers. Okay. Okay. Because looking at, I'm sure that you've come across this, that um, a client will confront you based on what they've heard elsewhere yeah. in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. They talk to you and try to compare that and even tell you oh, how course. much whoever it was they spoke yeah. to before is charging. Yeah, with that, yeah, I give it, I, I, you have an experience. I got to quote just, <laughs> today, just before the interview. Wow. I had a call, yeah. Tell us about it. <laughs> I don't know how, I wouldn't go into that much. But I mean, yeah, yeah, he, just, he, was yeah. Just, he was just saying he went for somebody and that person has disappointed him mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah, but that person was charging this figure. Mm -hmm. and. He knows about my prices, yeah, mm -hmm. but this the amount that person was willing to go for. So if I can come down to that, I'm like, my brother, oh, he was there. And now he has he has disappointed you and you want me and now just to, to fill in for that now and brother, still take what it now. If you if you are willing to meet up my my asking price there, then yeah. I can work with you. Yeah. From what you're saying it then it means that some photographers are not charging what they should charge. Yeah, basically. Or is there cost. some differences? Because I know that of course photographers are different in what they think they should charge and their skill set. Yeah. But in any line of work, if we are going to have a smooth flow and have um, comfort mm -hmm. in charging and getting what we are worth mm -hmm. in the end, I think, don't, don't you believe that if we had a system that does how much we charge across board, don't you think, because in the end, we are all delivering pictures, we are delivering something. And if it's weddings, we are all going to spend the same amount of time, time. hours at the wedding. Why is it that clients don't want to pay us what we are worth? Because we know very well how many times we've gone to the internet to learn whatever it is that yeah. has gotten us where we are. Don't you think that there should be a system for, for photographers to actually follow? Um, I think um, if you can all unite as one... <laughs> that's going to be <laughs> that's a big challenge. Example, it's yeah, almost yeah, like yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah so... <laughs> Uh, if you can't settle that differences when we come together as, as a group or something, I think this thing is always going to it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be there. For mm, it's going to be the deal. Yeah, and then it's it's re really 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 tough. Yeah. So take us through a, your day, your normal day shooting a wedding. How does normal it start? Days. Normally, I wake up around five a.m. Wow, yeah, that five a.m. Yeah, just try to do some small exercises just to. Get to get yourself stretch. ready, <laughs> my, my, my body stretched yeah. Yeah, before I take the shower. Okay. Yeah. Then um, I think I prepare my gears. Yeah. Then uh, I find the location. If I don't know the location, I just find the location together with my boys. Then yeah. we move straight to the location. the location. Yeah. Then we meet up with the client or the uh, how do you call it, the wedding planner or coordinator or 
or yeah, whoever is in charge of the wedding. Okay. And we we see the client, then we try to make that rapport with the client. Yeah. Yes, then we tell her what we expect of her on that day. That day. Yeah. Then we start from we there. Start working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So through into the wedding, how many hours normally? I mean, on, on average, average, on average, six hours. Six hours. Yeah. Wow. Working for six hours. Yeah. And the clients yeah. find it difficult to pay what you are worth. <laughs> Most most it doesn't time, even most end of, there. Most of the time, yeah, you surpass that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and even it doesn't just end there at shooting. You come back with tons of pictures yeah, to post come at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes most clients want you to do it the next day. They want you to do it same day as you are, you are shooting, but they're not willing to pay for pay that. Pay for the extra. Yeah. Hmm. So if you say something or you had a chance, because this is actually a chance to talk to the clients, <laughs> your prospective clients, tell them what you expect them to get themselves ready before they confront you because of course you've been doing well in this space and yeah i mean you guys you've seen a couple of pictures i've showed a couple of pictures from kwaku nicholas he's doing massively well yeah. in the wedding creative space if you had a chance if, in fact there's actually a chance tell the clients <laughs> what you you wish or what you believe that they should actually see photography to be in the end because we, we are all working hand in hand to make something happen. So if I'm making you happy, you also should make me comfortable. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I do. I would wish the all my most of my clients or all my clients to go for our premium packages. So that we can give them a premium service. <laughs> yeah, so that we can give yeah. You the premium service. Of course, so yeah. you can give in your all because yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. It will, it, yeah, so it will yeah. make you very comfortable because yeah. you know very well that in yeah, the if end, if, if, there is, if you see value on your on your memories, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Just go for the premium. Yeah. Yeah, and give yeah. You premium service. That's all. <laughs> that's very wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So that's to you, clients. If you're going to book Kweku Nicholas for your wedding, be ready because he's ready for you. He's ready to do everything that it takes to make you happy in the day. You. So you should also do the same. Yeah. <laughs> Reciprocate that love. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're in your, I mean, I'll call it a studio. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually your living room, but you've turned it into a studio. That's how you can actually make do of whatever space that it is of you course, have. Yeah. Because photography, you need a background, you need a couple of lights, and if you are working in a studio. Yeah. How much in general did you spend on your studio where we are? Um, at this point. Mm. Point. Because yeah. if someone wants to start a studio, maybe from the ground, because your equipment, they cost a lot. <laughs> someone starting cannot probably afford yes, all that. Yes, but what yes, would yes, you yes, think, yes. or what would you um, for advise? Yeah, for basic um, how much? You can just yes. go in for two lighting and set up. Okay. Yeah, that, was, that was what I did way back, like four years ago. Okay. Yeah, two lighting and set up. That was what I used to use. Uh, um, so I had two, this, um, how do you call it? Speed lights. Speed lights. Yeah, but now I have strobes all over. Yeah, but. It wasn't like that way back. So if you are if you are looking to start something fresh and like you are on a budget, you just have to go with something small. Yeah, small. Then as time grows or as you, your clientele increase, then yeah, you build you, on you top build of it. Yeah. Because this whatever we are seeing over here costs around like let's say thirty k. Wow, three hundred thousand. <laughs> that I mean thirty thousand <laughs> Ghana cities. Yeah. That's like three hundred cities. Old Ghana cities, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, a little bit over that. Uh, <laughs> a little bit even over that. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, this particular studio where you shoot at, um, when people walk in, um, normally photographers have a dressing room and all that for the client because this could be an advert. I mean, to prospective clients to yeah. walk in. First of all, can you tell us where you are in the studio? Where are we? Where's your studio located? Yeah, first yeah, of we are Bomso. 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 Yeah, close in to Ashanti the region. Yeah. yeah. Close to Kenya University. Close to Kenya University. Yeah. Yes. And uh, they can find you digitally as well on, yeah, the, on Google yeah. Map. And what's what's the location? Kenya Plus Photography. Yeah, okay. On Google Map. Yeah. Very well. Very well. So when your clients come in, um, how is the I mean a normal day shooting in the studio? How do you go about it? Normal day shooting mm. in the studio. So um, usually the clients they have you have to book before yeah. you get here. We don't do workies. Oh, so, yeah, we don't do working, so mm. it's that you book. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like so that going book. against the flow because normally people just walk yeah, into no, any no, studio no, and no, just don't do yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. You make your bookings then. So you are met at the gate, then you bring you in, then you go, you head to the changing room, or beautiful. You just come in with your makeup artist, you go to prepare yourself, then you set up the so studio for you. Then, yeah, okay, okay. This question. I really want to ask you. I got asked by one blogger who came over to interview me that photographers touch models in the wrong areas. <laughs> he made it so general that I was trying to um, combat it or to object it, of course, because I don't do that. But 
Um, I'm sure that you've heard a thing or two about that kind of behavior that some photographers probably, because it's true, I would say some photographers do that for real because I've heard models complain about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to say about that? Because, of course, you definitely might have heard. Yeah, if I heard, I've, I've heard that. a couple of <laughs> Because it really affects us. Yeah. People think that photographers do that for doing sake. Yes. Maybe. Um, I mean, there should be a reason. Yeah, yeah. If you don't take, if you don't um, um, consider that... Um, I think you might have a problem with even your your relations, like maybe your girlfriend, your yeah, wife, yeah. or yeah. your family members. Yeah. So I think uh, I've seen a couple of comments, and I've heard people also saying all sort of things about oh. photographers and models. <laughs> yeah. But um, basically, I think um, it depends on that photographer and mm -hmm. how professional the person is, or it depends on. The relation that photographer has with that model. Yeah, model. You see, there can be a photographer who is so acquainted with um, the particular model that he or she, um, he will decide to, let's say, um, spray oil on the model the and even sometimes, yeah, touch and yeah. smear the oil yeah. on the body. But if, if you, can, you can you can do that professionally, you can yeah. do some that fun just because maybe you are so cool with the client or you are so cool with the model. Yeah. So somebody will say oh you are touching the person um, the wrong way. in the wrong way but maybe you are just doing your way let's say for instance you have no one around you and you're working with someone for the first time okay. and this lady perhaps of course wouldn't be comfortable with you touching her in some particular area so you don't have any female around to do that for you okay. what will be your approach towards that okay if she is not comfortable with me doing it um she might want to do it herself so I'll okay just, like tell her how she should go about it then I'll just leave her to it. Uh, okay. She, she okay. Has I think that's actually the, the ultimate um, way to go about it. Other than that, maybe in some cases... In some the, cases, most, yeah. in most cases, the, <laughs> the models or the clients wants to have this rapport with the photographer usually. First of all. Yes, mm. so they would want you to do it. Do for that them. for them. Yeah. Because they are entrusting their safety in your hands. And some people, of course, other photographers who abuse that particular, mm. I mean... Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> men, men will always be men, you know. <laughs> I'm not like that. Hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> <My brother. laughs> okay, so going into it, um, mm. you've made a couple of um, friends in the modeling space. You started yeah. being, a, I mean, as a model, yeah. and um, going across, you normally work with more ladies than you do with men, right? Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to, um, um, of course, when you started with photography mm. you definitely confronted some models yeah, you course. confronted some makeup artists probably trying to work hand in hand we call it a collaboration yeah, collab you collaborated with mm -hmm. them to shoot to start out something or create a portfolio in the end how did you go about it? because when people start photography it's very difficult for them to first of all get their hands on professionals to yeah. work with them yeah Normally, we are advised to work with our friends and all, but perhaps you may not have that good of um, an experience working with a non-professional model or someone who doesn't necessarily do that for real. Okay, so, so um, how did you go about it? Yeah, so when I started, mm. uh, because I was already into the modeling thing, you know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of, I had a lot of model friends, yeah. like female friends, yeah. So, but the first one, I think the first one I really reached out to was my bestie. She's called Pearl. Pearl okay. Borsia. Yeah, so I reached out to her. Then she came in for the first time. Then we went to a location. Then okay. we shot. Yeah. Then I posted. I got some likes and yeah, I got people interested in whatever I've started. started. Yeah. So um, I also had some um, other model friends. Yeah. I just told them I've started photography, so I just wanted to have a shoot with them. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a matter of calling. Yeah. yeah I mean, reach out to and, them and I mean, all that. Most mm. of them also wants wants that exposure. They want yeah. to have pictures and stuff so mm -hmm. when you're a beginner you just maybe try and um, put out your idea this is what yeah. i want to do so if you think you're interested just link up let's okay. let's call up yeah. yeah yeah personally when i started i reached out to a number of models yeah of course some will decline yeah. because they'll go check your work and notice that you are <laughs> yeah, an up-and-coming yeah. photographer so <laughs> they don't feel it to be right to come over and, and quote waste their time yeah, you know what I mean? but i was more keen on that i kept on Hitting up on, you know, uh, not in that wrong way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hitting, I mean, them up and yeah, uh, trying to get them to come work with me. I mean, try mm -hmm. my hands on them. I did my best. I mean, from the onset, I started with a D5100 Nikon. Oh, yeah. I was <laughs> easy to say it's D. <laughs> you see, yeah, you started, started good. Yeah, I started You started it. good. Yeah. And I mean, I had to hit my head around things to, yeah. I mean, understand a couple of things and, you know, try to get professionals to work with. 
to understand what I was actually learning online because I spend most of my time on YouTube, which yeah. I know you definitely yeah, do that's as well. What I did. Because creators, you never stop learning. You never I mean, at the point you said that, you always learn. Yeah, I'm always and any time that um, you go on the shoot, definitely you're going to learn a thing or two because yeah. something is going to be different in that scenario. So, um, coming, oh, you, you have something to say? Yeah, like <laughs> I, I was about to say, you also have to learn from other creatives. Yeah, even of my, course. my, of let, course. Me, let me say, my, my interns or my boys I have around. Yeah, I learned so many things from them. Yeah, especially yeah. Um, there's this guy at my studio, Tres Studios. I learned <laughs> a lot from him. <laughs> yeah, so. You just don't have to undermine anybody. Like, yes. just take it, whatever you get. Yeah. yeah. Just something little. Yeah, and, and it works. Yeah. yeah. No matter who the person is, yeah. probably the person might have seen something. Something you don't know. Maybe in a film or probably on another of shoot, course, and maybe course. they want to bring it on board. I mean, just be yes, welcome yes, yes. to anything to that comes. Yeah, and try your hands out. You don't know what mm -hmm. you may be learning. It works. Yes, yes. It really works. Yes, yeah. yes. Because pride doesn't come into our creative space, mm -hmm. you understand. With weddings mm -hmm. and portrait photography, I mean, portrait photography happens in weddings because someone told me that with weddings, and I know you would definitely believe that, weddings comprises a lot of genres in photography because there's beauty, mm -hmm. there's yeah. fashion, there's lifestyle, there's right. food photography, mm -hmm. there's even landscape photography involved in weddings. So it's a whole package in one. involved in one. Yeah. And this is one thing that I always, of course, tell people who confront me if they want to learn photography and go ahead to make it a business. Mm -hmm. That if you want to start photography, you definitely have to shoot weddings. Right. Because in one way or the other, weddings, of course, people are going to constantly get wedded yeah. and they have different budgets across, across board. board yeah. Yes. So when you started doing um, wedding photography, how did you improve and how did you transition from charging this to that much? Okay. So let's say, um, basically, we did an upgrade. Yeah, so of course. Up upgrade of gadgets or equipment. Yeah. Like, and the team. Yeah, and the definitely. Team, yes. Yeah, the team increased. And yes. The clientele also changed. Mm -hmm. So, obviously. Yeah, based on that, they had to, yeah, 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 to yeah of course. Yeah. Of course. And of course, because you've been learning as well, trying to improve yes, on your yes, skill set, your work also transitioned to become even better than they were before. Yeah. Yes. When it comes to editing, post production, as we have to call it, yeah. how much time do you spend on editing pictures and what's your approach? Because someone would definitely put it into a software like Lightroom mm -hmm. and <laughs> apply. <laughs> because personally, personally, when I used to shoot weddings a lot, yeah, just do I would, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would take my time because of course I was keen on getting the best yeah, out of there. Course. But as I was developing, I was, I was also coming across other ways, other avenues to arrive at something Same. good, yeah. but still with, I mean, a shorter way around it. So with your editing process, how do you go about it when you have a ton of pictures, for instance, from a wedding to edit? Okay, I don't have a specific time or like a range of time to uh, finish a particular picture. Okay. It all depends on the details of that particular picture yes. and what I want to achieve yes. with that picture. Yeah, so um, let's say if it's a portrait, a headshot or something <laughs> like that, um, it's going to take me a maximum of like 20 minutes Okay. Yeah, to finish something like a, yeah. like a portrait. Because it's yeah. detailed. It's very yeah. detailed. Yeah, that one, that one quite is like a speed work. Yeah, yeah 20 for that 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, 20 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, because you know it's a ton of pictures, so yeah. I need to take your, I mean, be quicker. Be, yeah, so that you can. Uh, yeah, but yeah, when it's a um, full shot and stuff like 10, 10, 10 seven yes. minutes, yeah, should, be done. should be done. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's interesting. So I mean, when you're working on beauty shots, mm -hmm. you know it takes time, a yeah. whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. All right, can you tell me about an experience that you had working on portraits? of models that had a lot of blemishes, a lot of skin mm -hmm. <laughs> conditions. I mean, you know what I mean? Pimples yeah, and all that across the face. Of course, you may not like that, but when it comes to weddings, you cannot, of course, determine and choose who you're going who to shoot. Yeah. Unless probably you get a chance to talk to them, maybe decline, but most of them are not. You go and meet what you have. <laughs> yes. So working with such people or such clients, mm -hmm. do you charge extra when you see them? No. <laughs> it's funny, right? No, I don't. You see? Yeah. I just, I just, I just think, I just think I will just pick my shots. Yeah. Seeing maybe have a lot of blemish, I don't think I would just I would do a lot of close-ups. Okay, that's your way around it. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's just, smart. I just try to skip yeah, that part. Shoot away from. Yeah. I mean, I mean a little yeah, bit I of a distance. Try to get yes. A, better angle so that I wouldn't have a lot of work to do. Work to do. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's, that's actually a good way because when you are a little bit away from the subject, mm -hmm. you're still shooting with the same number of megapixels yeah. if you were to be shooting closer, closer to them. And when you're back 
I mean, backed up a little bit. The detail wouldn't be yeah, as much as if you're close. So yeah. that's actually a way around. That's very smart. I really like that idea. <laughs> Do you know something? It really baffles me a whole lot because right. I just don't understand why photographers as good as you mm-hmm. or a photographer as good as you yes. <laughs> wouldn't start a YouTube channel. Why? <laughs> Is it that you don't like sharing knowledge? Obvious, no, no, or no, you don't no, have no, time? No. Which, obviously, which obviously, <laughs> uh, photographers like me uh-huh. like to be behind the cameras more than me in front of the cameras. So that's my, that's my excuse. Really? Yeah, that's my but, excuse. So there's no way that one day, maybe in the future, you're going to start oh, a YouTube channel? Oh, you're looking into that. I'm looking into yeah, them. Yeah, because I believe that, I believe that definitely you have a thing or two to share, I mean, for free, of course. Because YouTube is becoming something that, in one way or the other, is going to be an necessity. For all photographers, yeah. it's gonna be a necessity for all. So yeah. So, so I think you have to start. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. shoot your first video after this interview. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. Okay. So, um, do you have anything to tell any upcoming photographer? I mean, we we all had a story. We still have a story, and we are still learning each and every day. Yeah. Would you have any advice whatsoever to tell anyone wanting to start doing photography? Maybe perhaps go into the genre of wedding photography that you do right now. Okay, so what I'll tell my younger brothers out there, and is of course sisters also shoot yeah, well. okay, my shoot pictures, <laughs> photographers, okay, are females, my younger well. brothers and sisters, so, uh-huh, don't leave them out. Is <laughs> to have time to learn. Yes, yeah, they should have time to learn. Yeah. yeah, they should. They should value whatever they are doing, like the, the photography, because it's it's lucrative yeah. in some way. Yeah, and um, in this time, so yes. they should have patience and yeah. yeah, they should just keep on learning and. Um, be consistent with whatever they are doing. Yeah, and I think everybody will come up. Yeah, and with the challenges, I mean, can you tell? I mean, whoever wants to get their foot in the door of at the door of um, weddings, what are the challenges that definitely they may face so that they can get themselves prepared because they might be caught by surprise. So, what are the things that you got confronted? If you can tell them, they can get themselves prepared so they are not caught by surprise. You understand what I mean? Okay, so, if there's so, anything you would, um, yeah, a challenge. My little brothers and sisters out there who are looking to go into wedding photography, I think they have to be prompt. Yeah, yeah they have to be very prompt in the sense that um, for weddings, when you miss the shot, that's, the that's it. You can't go and tell the, um, the pastor that please. <laughs> I missed the uh, shot, so I, let's I go back. Shot, so let, please put back the veil <laughs> and let them, <laughs> let's redo that. Yeah. It so doesn't like, happen. So you, you always know, have to be yes, yes, vigilant yes, yes. and ready. Yes, you have to set your yes. your apertures and your ISOs and whatever at yeah. the right numbers right. Then, yes. so that you can get like nicer shots. Yeah. Yeah, so that you have little to do when you are um, doing post production. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, Kaku, uh-huh. you once started with a Canon EOS 6D. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, you were fortunate to have had that in your family already. Yeah. But at a point, you felt that you had outgrown it. That's why you use another camera, which is an upgrade, obviously, on um, the 6D. Yeah. What camera, first of all, do you use? Um, Canon USR. USR, yeah. which cost a fortune oh, to oh. <laughs> acquire that particular piece of gear. Yeah. And can you tell me at what point and how did you feel when you're using the 6D and what point did you, I mean, realize that you needed to upgrade? And what were the reasons behind that decision? Yeah. Um, how do I put it? Like, I realized, I realized, um, for, I realized I've, I've grown, like you said, yeah. I've grown the 6D and um, there were a lot of shots I wanted to achieve that a 6D um, wasn't really well, helping. Really, yeah. Yes, and, and I'm able to achieve that with a yeah. with yeah. R. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I thought it wise to just upgrade. Upgrade yeah. that. Yeah. But did you have your? Did you get the chance to hold an EOS R to try it out before buying one for yourself or? Yes, a couple of just times. Just for that. A couple okay. of times. Okay. Okay. From, from for my friends like, okay yeah so yeah yeah that's when probably you realize that yes, because in weddings you need to take pictures some of them you have to take continuous shots quickly yeah. and the us and the 6D tracking, the tracking mode is like it's, it's very, better yeah, on it's the very, usr yeah. truly truly because the usr first of all is a mirrorless, mirrorless camera, camera and this one's uh, i mean a dslr <laughs> yeah. of course and when you're shooting in burst mode the dslr i think the canon us 6d shoots 4.5 pictures a second yeah for the continuous shot, and I think the US should yeah. shoot more. Yeah. I'm gonna please in that. Draw. I can't really remember. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's better in a lot of ways than that, of course, yes. So these are the reasons why Kweku decided to upgrade on his US 6D because there are a lot of shots and there are a lot of features that you can acquire 
if you are comparing these two cameras and he made these decisions based on these reasons which are potent because you don't just upgrade on a gear just because you've seen your friend using it yeah. nah that's a lame decision to make or just because you have a lot of money of course not <laughs> yes you have to have a big reason you know that if i get this particular piece of gear i can be able to achieve this and it comes with experience and practice and a good reason behind it so yeah so this actually brings us to the end of the interview thank you very mm -hmm. much Mr. Kwaku Nicholas, <laughs> for having us over here in your wonderful studio. You're welcome. Okay. And uh, yeah, this has been Chris's Chats. And I know very well that you've been inspired in one way or the other, listening to the story of our brother over here who's doing massively well in the <laughs> wedding photography space. And just as we do over here on Chris's Chat, we, we actually go into the lives and uh, the experiences and the, I mean, all the stories that they have to tell us to get us inspired and if we want to get our foot in the door or whatever it is the discipline that they are actually into we can also have a thing or two to learn from and get ourselves ready all right so once again this has been kobe shots hosting mr koku nicholas on critics chat and yeah until the next video i'm gonna catch you later have a wonderful day let's go see ya